Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. So excited to have Tony Moralt here back joining us today. Uh, Happy New Year, I should say. I mean, it's been a while. Uh, The might of Maxwell is today's agenda. But for those new listeners today, we need to introduce yourself and tell them more about what you do as the uh, chief leader and president of your company, Lead Left, Grow Right. Welcome. Thanks, Jill. So Lead Left, Grow Right, my company, um, the leading left is comes from um, uh, really my background in 25 plus years at a Fortune 1000 company in a variety of positions, as well as my nine years in the Navy and finding uh, a, some, some similarities to what I was taught when I went to Annapolis at the United States Naval Academy, but uh, quite a bit also is different and so that's kind of the spirit and mission is by taking some new looks at leadership practical skills um and they're pretty well outlined in my book uh that's come out the leadership quotient uh a practice practice versus theory so i try to make it more practical and my background is as i said um nine years in the navy doing a variety of functions i got I got to teach midshipmen for two years, which was wonderful. Uh, I then worked for Hallmark Cards for over 25 years before we parted ways. And uh, I did everything, uh, almost every job uh, in the supply chain arena, with the exception of a few. And then I got into technology. Uh, I was the primary contracting officer for putting in a large scale computer, basically a rip and replace of all of the 1930s and 40s and 50s systems. So um, when I left Hallmark, I started my company and the company is focused really around two things. One is consultancy. So um, consulting both on leadership, but also on process. Uh, I'm a systemic thinker, so I can go to places and figure out from a whole systems perspective, what's going on and what might need to be fixed. Uh, and then my passion is leadership as well. So those are kind of the two major consulting fronts. And I try to stay in um, small to medium-sized companies because uh, the large-scale companies usually have their own uh, idea. Um, some of it's right, some of it might be wrong, but the, the, I don't want to go tackle the, the big boys and girls out there. So, All right. How can we reach you? Tell us the website, please, and your contact information. The website is all one word, leadleftgrowright.com, leadleftgrowright.com. And you can contact me on that website. There's a contact form that you can use to fill out. I just had someone uh, send me something the other day. Uh, So feel free to use that. Or you can contact me personally at tony.marlt, my first and last name separated by a dot. And it's M-A-R-O-L-T at gmail.com. All right. So tell us, Tony, what are some of your favorite or most important leadership authors and their books? I know you want to kind of dive in that into that for today. Yes. And uh, I wanted to back up to something that we didn't get into in the last because uh, as I was drawing up the agenda, I found myself using that. So uh, I'm going to backtrack a little bit um, and go to the last item on the agenda, which was something from last week. And it's called the elevator speech, and then we'll get into um, books and authors and et cetera. And so the elevator speech, the premise is you're on the elevator at floor 10, and uh, usually the CEOs and big shots are up on the high levels in most companies. Um, So the CEO of the company steps onto the elevator before it closes. You're both going to floor two, which means you've got about 15 seconds to make an impression or not make an impression or whatever. So the elevator speech is something that you should have prepared for when those situations occur. It doesn't always have to be the CEO in a very large company that has 100,000 people, you're probably never gonna see the CEO, but uh, you'd be surprised that when you might run into someone in the hallway or in particular in the elevator, and you've got a little bit of time, just a brief moment in time, to make an impression on them. So the elevator speech is, what are you gonna say to that person in those 15 seconds as you're going down? Obviously, one thing you can do is sit silent like most people do in the elevator and uh, just do nothing. But um, 
I would posit that in the the greatest leaders, those that get ahead, have an elevator speech, even if they're not giving it to the CEO in the elevator, but you practice as though you were. And really, it's talking a, a little bit about yourself, but it's it's not primarily there to just focus on yourself and say, hey, uh, I don't know if you know me, I'm Tony Marlton, I should be promoted. That would be a really bad move. But your elevator speech would be, uh, hi, so-and-so, uh, my name's Tony Marlt. I, I work in the, the marketing division under so-and-so, and we've got some really great projects that I'm excited to work on, and this is what they are, and here's what we're doing with that, and give them a few seconds to respond. You know, they, you, they could certainly blow you off, but most people, if you give them a direct, hey, this is what's happening in my world, or here's where I really like where the company's going, it could be about a lot of things. You know, I really appreciate last quarter's uh, news that, you know, we made an extra $100 million in profit. Um, so that's for medium to large companies. In a, in a small company where you only have, or everyone's wearing the same hat, you might run into a muckety-muck all the time, or you might be a muckety muck uh, in a small company and wear a hat that says director, even though you're a director of three people, right? <laughs> yeah. That's that's not <laughs> the same as being a director at Exxon Mobil or uh, Hallmark Cards or something like that. But nonetheless, um, you should have a speech too. What if someone asks you about something or wants to comment to you? You should always be open to that feedback. So and yeah. and and you never know, even if you're just one of the 20 people I work in the company, take time all the time to influence in a positive way your CEO or the CFO or ask them questions that in a larger company, you might have to wait for like an all hands meeting or something like that. Mm -hmm. so, so the elevator speech is something that's really, really important. Have, have you um, been, been told about that practice, Jill, or do you use it? No, no, this is all new to me. I, I okay. th thank you. Yeah, I'm not in my business. I never, yeah, we've never really had this type of conversation about elevator speeches and have done this type of thing. So this is all new to me for sure yeah. in the television news business. Yep. Well, well, I, I think it can be used anywhere, and uh, you know, in, in a company or multiple companies in the same building, it's another way you can reach out and network uh, with an elevator speech. Obviously, you have to read the room. Um, but anyway, so that's the elevator speech. So, um, let's go back to the, the agenda and the, the bulk of it. I'd like to spend on something called the might of Maxwell. Okay. So, uh, so go ahead, Jill. Do you have any questions? No, no. I'm learning as we go myself. You're very thorough. Okay. So, um, so some of my favorite or most important leadership authors in their books and, you know, I could go on for quite a while, but I, I've tried to really skinny it down. <laughs> well, that was my uh, question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To, 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 because, yes, there, there's you, there's lots and lots of folks that I've read, but some have super influenced me uh, in, in major ways. So uh, I tried to skinny it down to an elevator speech. Mm -hmm. So that was my goal. Okay. Got it. okay. So that's why I kind of had wanted to talk about elevator speech before. So um my elevator speech to that question would be something like this. Um, the book, Fierce Conversations by Susan Scott, uh, frankly, that changed my life in um, terms of the kind of communicator I wanted to be, uh, the communicator I want other people to be. Um, it's a, I, I can't say anything more about it than it's phenomenal. And I have taught many groups this book uh, that I led at Hallmark Cards and taking them through the book chapter by chapter and we ask open and honest questions and we talk about all of the concepts that are in there and there are many. Um, so Susan Scott does an amazing job. Another book for me and for all introverts I would really strongly suggest um, if I had introverts in my group I would almost make it mandatory for them as a uh, developmental thing, but read The Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Won't Stop Talking. And that's by Susan Kane. So another Susan. Okay. Susan. And um, it, if I would have, if Tony would have had this with his 18 or 19 year old self, 
uh, I have had a great life. Um, it's full of ups and downs like other people as well. But if I would have had this book, if it had been in print, I would have just been even more successful and better relationships, et cetera, et cetera, because of this book, because mm -hmm. it really helped me to understand why I'm a weirdo and, you know, I'm only like, I'm only like 3% of the population and that's okay. You know, that's okay to be a weirdo. And I would suggest even if you're an extrovert, if you have uh, introvert um, partners or introvert friends, this is a great way to say, oh, now I get why in conversations, this is how you come into the conversation or, or whatsoever. So fantastic yeah. book. Um, it's a book that while I was developing my thoughts about leadership uh, and teasing those out through my experiences uh, in the United States Navy, my classmate from Annapolis, his name is David Marquette. You mm -hmm. can find it under L. David Marquette, M-A-R-Q-U-E-T, and it's called Turn the Ship Around. Okay. And it's Dave's experience. The, uh, my son is a submariner, so uh, I know what a very strict and demanding they have to. They're, they've got a nuclear reactor on board and all kinds of weapons. It's a very powerful thing. But um, so a lot of the tried and true things are go to the book because protocols have been developed. Well, Dave kind of tried some different strategies in his career to really open up what those leaders in mm -hmm. uh, on a submarine can be. And he turned the ship around in one year. So um, from the worst in the fleet to the best. Wow. So that's pretty amazing. So if you get time and then anything by Simon Sinek, um, uh, of course, if people haven't heard of Simon Sinek, he's a great thought leader, not just on leadership, but other topics as well. But check out Simon Sinek, S-I-N-E-K. But um, so now that I gave my, elongated elevator speech i'll give you that because i decided i went in, into each of these my favorite all time if i had to pick just one um it's dr john c maxwell i have read a number of his books he's written over 50 books about leadership and motivation he even took a team down many years ago to guatemala and um was working with their government to uh, because they have a very young population there to identify and figure out how they might bring leadership skills to that country as they were developing. Um, so it's, he's an amazing guy. Uh, you can read any of his books, but um, the one I thought we'd take a quick look around today. And as I was preparing the agenda, I actually didn't get past chapter one. So um so I never made it to the 21st, but because there's just, it's just so rich with things in it. So um, one of the things that he talks about is a foundation. So I, Joe, I guess I throw the question out to you. What is your foundation for leadership for yourself? Uh, do you consider it right now uh, built on granite or limestone or sand? And how did you build that foundation? Well, just over the course of learning, uh, over the years of experience, but some is pretty solid. I think I'm a good leader. Um, maybe not in the, in the respect of parenting, right? Because my kids would disagree. Uh, well, <laughs> well if your business, kids disagree, that means you're being a great leader parent for exactly, them. Okay, then, then I am a good leader. But no, in my <laughs> line of work, no, leadership is important. And I feel pretty established on leadership and the grounds that I take and the people that I work with and how we work together and um but i'm also my own entity at this point i don't uh, <laughs> you know yeah. i'm not i'm not in a newsroom i'm not i'm not amongst people showing leadership it's it's me and my own and i hope i show good leadership skills um absolutely uh but i i can't really um and my foundation i mean it was built on just it's experience, I have to say, of learning what good leaders are, what they're not, and how I want to be and what I want to emulate, which to me is a good leader, someone who listens, who takes Absolutely. other people's uh, words into account and actually does, takes action, not just listens, but Absolutely. actually takes action to what they think is good or better or, yeah, and compromise for sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, and you did the work, you know, that's what you're describing. You did the yeah. work. Yeah. If you had those experiences, a lot of people will not do the work to stretch. And, you know, when someone smacks them down or with a bad leadership tactic, they 
find a way to get back up, even if it was a hard hit. And um, they say, okay, what did I learn from that? And usually it's okay. I don't want to ever do that again. Like that yeah. jerk j- just did. <laughs> and, and so, but if you don't do the work, then your core yeah. is going to be more like limestone, which washes away over the years uh, or sand, which completely washes away. And you don't, to be a good leader, you've got to have this core, right? And, and that core has to include integrity and your values and what means the most to you. And you have to tease that out as you go through your life experiences, if you're going to become a, a, a great leader. So, um, so again, m- all my interactions with you, you are, you've been very, very blessed to have uh, been gifted with the, the talent of speech and also of listening because you can't be, you can't be a successful podcast host if you're not listening to people. Right. Yeah. That would be horrible. um, (laughs) Yeah. So you're, uh, you know, you, you've really got, um, in all of my interactions with you, it comes out very easily what kind of uh, leadership base you have. Thank you. See, I don't even see it as that. I see it as I'm just a person that likes people and I like talking and listening and communication. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's just a blessed career that I'm in that something that comes easy doesn't feel like I'm trying. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Well, and and you're one of those leaders that doesn't always necessarily see themselves as a leader. And yet you are. And that's, as we've said many, many times, my Tony's point of view is everyone is a leader, period, the end. So, um, so I think that's that's great. Um, let's talk a little bit, uh, some quotes that Maxwell says, um, and the time is ripping by, isn't it? So, um, so Maxwell says, crisis doesn't necessarily make character, but it certainly does reveal it, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and it's just like you said, it, it's what you choose to do with it. If, if you lend let it break you and you hold on to that for years and years, then it's damaging you and your core is not going to be solid. You're not going to, you know, it, questions of in- integrity and values are going to be very difficult to, um, to really strengthen with muscle memory. Uh, another quote in this first chapter, adversity is a crossroads that makes a person choose one of two paths. Mm-hmm. And I find this really interesting. The two paths are one is character, or you can choose compromise. What do you think of that? Um, oh, I don't know, because you got to compromise sometimes, right? Mm-hmm. You have to, and that can inflict upon your character is what you're saying, like, because... Yeah, I th- that's, what, that's what I take from that. It, it, you either can choose for your character... And he's really asking questions about your core and stuff. So, yes, we do have to compromise if you know, nothing gets done unless we do a compromise. Okay. Uh, he's talking about compromising your values um, and, and your integrity. Mm, you know, some it, people which... are some people are challenged and and say, well, you know, we're going to do this. And you may say, you know, that's not ethical. I'm not doing that. Doing. Yeah. Some people do. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that happening? Did you see my my. It happened before too. But hold on, my video just oh. went off. I didn't even touch anything. Hello, hello. What is going on? It must be your magnetic personality giving off all those <laughs> electromagnetic waves. I don't know what it is. Why is it going it. on and off? That is bizarre. It's weird. On. Ready, watch. I'm gonna step away from the uh, computer. Start here yeah, again. Back away for- <laughs> no, that is bizarre. It just went on and off on its own twice. Okay, not touching anything. Just to confirm. Okay, good. I'll let the station know. <laughs> um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So obviously you try not, you don't want to yeah. compromise your, your, right. your, your ethics, your, but some people right. do. What does Maxwell right. say? And, yeah. And he, he says, every time someone chooses character, they become stronger, even if that choice brings negative consequences. And that fear, in my mind, that's what holds so many of us back from really advancing in in a good and positive way um you know it's we don't we don't want to say something to the boss and that that goes back to fierce conversations so yeah 
if people want to read Fierce Conversations or, you know, we could even spend time on Fierce Conversations some week. Um, it it's really is about that, okay, what's the worst that can happen? And we all know what the worst thing that can happen is you get fired. But are you going to get fired over a conversation? It's possible, mm -hmm. yeah. but that that boss has got to be one of the, you know, the top 10 worst to do that. Why would you spend money to train an employee, bring them on board through the hiring process, and then get rid of them? And, and you have to do it in the right way. Uh, and Fierce Conversations lays that out as to how you get prepared to have a fierce or authentic conversation, I sometimes like to call it. Yeah. Um, another quote, anyone can say they have integrity, but action is the real indicator of character. And we see this a lot. Um, you know, with uh, people in the news from um, CEOs to or politicians to um, sports, any of that is people can say, I have integrity and this is what I do for integrity, but then they don't really take any action. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, you know, the the folks that are so poor in the world. I really want, I'm going to do something about that. And I'm going to start contributing whatever time to the food shelter or money. And then they don't do anything. Well, mm -hmm. as, as soon as you take that away, then you probably ought to take a look at their integrity and you'll probably find things lacking in that integrity. Um, I love this quote, talent is a gift, but character is a choice. What do you think of that one? Um, well, it's, I guess it is a choice, right? I mean, it's, how do I describe it? It's, it is a choice and people do have to make choices in their lives to really, I'm just a little lost here because I think we're out of order. Um, we, you said characters, a choice. It's, yeah, I think. Tal talent's a gift, but character's a choice. In other words, and the other one before was about it's, character yeah, know, and or compromise, compromise so. but I think right. no, a character is a choice. I is it? Yeah, I guess, but I don't know if it is. Well, so well, if Maxwell's I if saying, I told explain you, explain it to me, yeah, because yeah, so so um, you're I, right. People I, make I, choices I, to do the right thing or not. It's the character, yeah. but it also could be innate. No. Um. Well. Let's think about that. So you're a two-year-old baby. Do you have integrity at that point? Probably not. I don't think so. Right. So parents, and you see this with your little ones, I've certainly seen it with mine and my grandkids, is it's a choice on whether they, after I tell them to go to sleep, they sneakily put all out a flashlight and start playing their video game. They do. Right? They do. And, and so that's not good integrity on their part, True. but that's our, that's our job is to imbue them and talk about choices, the okay. right choices. Right. Mm -hmm. And so let's, uh, let's say you're a church going person and uh, they, they're passing the plate around uh, or the basket. And as you're putting your $1 bill in, you're taking out the five. Oh gosh, that's horrible. So see that that's a choice, you know? So, but that's Your not char character. Is that's no, it's, it's, it goes against character yeah. when you do that. Right. So if characters, character is a choice because of how we've been brought up, how we've been exposed to the world, um, what our belief systems are that True. could or could not be influenced right. by I'm religion or stuff. More. Yeah. Okay. Does that, does that make sense? Uh, yeah. I was thinking more of it's just character really is just an innate quality, not realizing you could choose to go on the record for being good with good character, but I, I could see it. I could see it. I see it. It, okay. it is an innate quality, but it's not, but, it, it, it doesn't become innate to your point unless you have been taught how, what integrity, things like integrity or lying, cheating, stealing, and okay. all those kinds of things. And then not just taught it, you've, and you've taken it in, you've mm -hmm. embraced it internally. So when you embrace, I will not lie, cheat, or steal. Okay, then True. that is, you are now, 
practicing that on a regular basis. So even if someone says, hey, uh, I got the church collection and I, I took half of it, you want some of it? You're going to say like, automatically, nope, but I'll be talking to the pastor real quick. So, you know, so, uh, I, and I'm really glad that you're saying, hey, I'm not understanding this. So yeah. I want to make it clear for our audience Everyone as well. Too, yeah. And if, okay. if people have questions yeah. and thank Thank you for having those questions. That's what makes things rich in a discussion. Um, so true leadership always involves people. We know that, yep. right? You can't be a great leader if you're not willing to interact with people. Even introverts that are CEOs or CFOs, they have to work with people. You don't get to that position if you don't work with people. So the old, the old leadership problem uh, and this comes from Maxwell. Maxwell, if you think you are leading <laughs> and no one is following you, then you're merely taking a walk. Beautifully you, said. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And so followers don't trust leaders if their characters okay. you know, is flawed, and they they know it to be flawed. It doesn't take very long for you to figure that out either with a new manager or whatever. So um, I think. Um, I think we're getting towards the end, right? Yeah, we're out of time. Minutes. Sorry, no, That's we what don't. I thought. That's okay. We're twenty-seven minutes in. Sorry. Okay. Um, well, we'll we'll finish this, and then uh, I'm I won't go through the whole book, but I'm going to take a look at maybe a, another chapter or two, and uh, we'll finish this up next time, and then go into maybe another. I know, chapter but it's so two. good. We want to take accountability. There's more to <laughs> what we're supposed to discuss today. We can discuss right. it next time. Tony, That's how right. can we reach you directly, please? Eight one six. 694-4656 is my phone number. Contact form on the website, leadleftgrowright.com, or send me an email at tony.marl at gmail.com. Perfect. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic day. Thanks, Joe. Stay Take tuned. Care. We'll be right back with more. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.